Welcome to Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry, Cape Coast Main Branch, where the undiluted Word of God is preached. Be blessed as you listen to today's sermon by Reverend Henry Danso, the head pastor of Cape Coast Main Branch. Reading from 15 to 21. Luke 12, 15 and 21. Luke 12, 15 to 21. And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Say, mm. And he told them a parable saying, The land of a certain rich man produced plentiful. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I'll do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, underline that phrase, and I will say to my soul, my soul, my soul. So, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, fool this night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared whose will they be so is anyone who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God this is the word of the Lord today's message is titled the value of the soul the value of the soul the value of the soul and i'm doing part one today next week god willing if we don't die or jesus doesn't show up we'll continue and do part two amen the value of the soul As a matter of fact, every human being is made up of certain immaterial dimension. And it is beyond the reach of science and psychology. It, It is only scripture or Bible, the Bible that brings that dichotomy. We are able to see the difference between the body, the soul, and the spirit. Hallelujah. So, human beings are more than what science and psychology has proposed. We are not just some flesh and blood. The flesh and blood is just a container. What we see outside It's just the container of the real person. Amen. The real person in you is the spirit. But sometimes it is used interchangeably in scripture to refer to the soul. Even though we can still draw the distinction between the body, soul, and spirit. But sometimes interchangeably the scripture uses spirit and soul to represent the immaterial aspect of a human being. Are you with me? So, you, 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 you are not just the body we see. There is an aspect of you that we do not see. And that aspect of you that we do not see is the real you. Are you with me? Hello? So, if you see my face and you don't like it, don't worry. It's just the container. If you see the size of my nose 
and you don't like the shape of my nose, that's okay. It is just the container. This is not the real me. The real me is the soul or the spirit, if I should put it that way. Amen. Now, the scripture we read talks about a man who has achieved success in his farming. The guy had a bumper harvest. The guy had a breakthrough that year. The field was powerful. And the guy was so happy and excited because he's, he knows that he's going to make lots of money. And he was thinking of how to even put his harvest into certain um, uh, um, warehouses. Because he could realize that the warehouse he has you know, cannot contain the harvest. So he was thinking of building more warehouses or as it were stores to put in. And, 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 and the thing he said was that, Charlie, when I've done all this thing, I will say to my soul, so relax, eat, enjoy. Why you do my what bread? And now so so also did the did the we renam nipa so ya dear enjoy just just take it cool and take some holidays and chill so the bible says when he made that assertion god said you are a fool why why are you a fool because you don't know what tomorrow holds for you and you you don't own your own life Sometimes we think that we own our own life. You can die this afternoon. You can die before the wedding comes on. So the Bible said, God said, tonight your soul will be taken out of you. And all the possession, all the things that you have acquired, we shall see who it will belong. All right. I reserve the scripture for next week. So all that I'm saying today is part one and is actually an introductory um, aspect of the whole message. Amen. All right. So the human soul, number one, is the image of God. The human soul, number one, is the image of God. I want us to refer to Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26 and 27. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man, and the man here is generic, in our image let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth verse 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them. Hallelujah. So, the human soul is the image of God. The reason the soul is very important is because it carries the very image of God. So, sometimes you may not like somebody, but remember that even though you don't like him, he carries the image of God. Are you with me? That's why you don't have to treat any human being with some kind of disdain because no matter what, that as long as the, is he or she is a person, a human being, he or she carries the image of God. And you, you better be careful how you treat the image of God. Amen. 
All human beings carry the image of God. Whether he is your servant, your maid servant, your gate man, your watchman, your security, your apprentice, your subordinate, your wife, your husband, whether he looks beautiful according to your own definition, because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Whether he is ugly according to your definition, whether the person is physically challenged or not, every human being carries the image of God. It was God who said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. So the soul is the image of God. Every human soul carries the image of God. You need to understand this. That is the value of the soul. The image of God. The likeness of God. Amen. So probably you... you you, 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 you were going out and you decided that you, you can't go out with the guy again. Make sure you, you are breaking the relationship based on issues. Not bringing that person down. Are you with me? Hello? Yeah? So don't let the person feel that on Sebi, on Yenipa. That, that's very, that would be cruel on your part. Amen. Just as you carry the image of God, your ex-boyfriend also carries the image of God. It was relationship matters that didn't go well, but the person carries the image of God. Amen. So if somebody also doesn't like you, don't get worried because the person doesn't like God. Number two, I'm saying here that the human soul is the real person. The real person is the human soul. Genesis 2 and the verse 7. Genesis 2, 7. Says that, Then the Lord God formed the man of the, man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. Hallelujah. And the man became what? A living soul. The real us is the living soul. When you take the soul out of us, we are just clay. Mm. In fact, somebody defined beauty as Decay that has been postponed to a specific date. Yeah. So, if by God's grace you have Coca-Cola shape and you know how to do catwalk, it doesn't make you more human than me who does double-double walk. <laughs> and I don't have the Coca-Cola shape. In fact, I don't have six-pack. Mine is one-pack. Fits all. It doesn't make you more human than me <laughs> because the real person in us is the living soul. When God created, when God formed man, it was the breath of God. Hallelujah. So the real person is the breath of God. The, the breath of God makes us living soul. When the breath is taken away, we are nothing but clay. That is awaiting decomposition. Amen. Ntiya to bwase. Ya me say ya den. Na ja she she no. Any ma ma no. Because you are a, a, a clay. At most you are a decomposing something. That is awaiting it is just the breath of God that makes us living soul. If God takes the breath, we are nothing before a decimal point. 
nti me se ja sheshe no na ja ma ma no because it is the breath of god that makes you a living soul Number three, the human soul is more valuable than anything in the world. Say, wow. The human soul is more valuable. Okay, I think I've skipped. But don't worry. So let's do it as number three. It's more valuable than anything in the world. Look at Matthew chapter 16 and the verse 26. Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, and the verse 26. Are you there? The King James says that, for what is... I, I, I don't get the English here. Let me read my own version. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life. And here the King James uses and loses his own soul. Stay there. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So there's a comparison here. It's saying that you can gain the whole world. You can get the power, all the power in the world. You can get all the wealth in the world. You can get all the fame in the world. But if you lose your soul, it means you have lost everything. So God is saying that your soul is more important than your certificate. I thought I would hear a better amen. Your soul is more important than your marriage. Your soul is more important than your pursuit in life. Your soul is more important than the position you are looking for in your office. Your soul is more important. Let me put it in a flip way. The soul of your brother is more important than the position you are fighting with him. Okay? Sometimes, because of a little position, we go all out to destroy another person just so we will occupy that position. We go all out to kill. Some people consult all kinds of powers to take another person off so that they will occupy the position. No, there are people who can just reason that the soul of another person, another person is more important because of can say, father leave something. Is that that's a that's a meaning. We and more See, that is why, that is why you don't have to, you don't have to uh, uh, and fight with anybody when it comes to land, title, properties. Don't. See, Jesus began, the scripture before, Jesus began by saying that, take care of all kinds of covetousness. Anything that takes you into covetousness. Be careful about it. Because a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. 
ungine nzema ejapaza wapri wenya are you with me your life is more important than the things that are acquired on earth oh am i making sense that is why if somebody is fighting with you your brother your sister is fighting you about a property your father left and leave it leave it leave it it doesn't make you a fool it makes you a wise person it means you have a better understanding to life are you with me leave it cocoa farm and so what uh 13 bedroom and so what leave it for him leave it for her you see if you have such understanding there are some things you will not worry at all that is why jesus said that what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul god is saying that the soul is more important than any other thing the soul is important than money the soul is important than fame the soul is important than the degrees all these things i'm saying i'm not saying they are not good though they are good we must get them amen but when it comes to scale of preference in the eyes of god one supersedes the other the soul is more important more valuable more valuable say or what will a man give in exchange for his soul the second statement is very powerful what will a man give in exchange for his soul what can you give in exchange for your soul it means that nothing comparable on earth can be used as an exchange for your soul are you with me what will a man give in exchange it's so sad that people who don't have this understanding sell their soul to the devil just for some coins some few dollars they sell their soul to the devil for fame maybe they are in the music industry they want their tracks to hit or their name to really become famous and they sell their soul to illuminati to all kinds of powers just to come into fame there was a guy who used to come to this church one day whilst i was ministering the lord opened my eyes and i saw that he belonged to a certain cult group yeah but he was coming young man be nice when he comes his neat i've not spoken to anybody about this so one day I felt so strong in my spirit so I, I invited him to the office. I said tell me what group do you belong to? He looked into my eyes ah uh, I said I'm asking you a question. He was shocked. No knowing he belonged to a serious serious occult in town. But he comes to church here. He was coming very nice. So I said since you started coming I I like you and I any time I'm ministering the spirit of God tells me something about you but now it has become so strong that's why I invited you so you belong to this group and you still want to come to church the two doesn't go so you better make a decision you cannot serve two masters so I I I threw the challenge to him. He said he will get back to me. And I haven't seen him since. Yeah. That is why sometimes if a young man even approaches you and talks about marriage and all those things, you must pray. Dive into the realms of the spirit. Because you may never know this is many young men belong to certain groups young young men young men they belong to 
one cult or occult or the other, which you may never know. Some of them are in town. Some of them drive nice cars. So those of you ladies who always want to date a guy with a car only, be careful. Be careful because, listen to me, it, it is not about the car. It is about your soul. These days, if you don't drive a car, a young man, you don't drive a car, you're a Christian young man, you don't drive a car like SWAT. If you propose right now, a Christian sister will look your, at you and say, now the, the car number also counts, eh? I didn't know, you are, you are just giving me, you are just giving me a hint. What's your car number? If your number ends with W or Y, it means you can't be a Your number is 18. Oh, okay. 19. Oh, <laughs> you are <laughs> 15. We can manage. Say, you move in, and you've been a year in my share, and I'm the worry, and come on, worry, because we had nuts. Nuts. I've told you time and time. The only tape I had in my room, even that one, it was my father who left the tape for me. <laughs> I had to <coughs> smash the side of the machine before it works. But the the lady didn't say. Oh, because of this. No, she, she was hopeful that I'll become somebody one day. And because of a nibre greediness, we, we want to date guys with those things already, already made. Let me tell you, many of such know how to exchange your soul for their wealth. Yeah. They consult their witch doctors and, and they tell them what to bring in exchange for their wealth. You have no idea. Sometimes they take your hair. Sometimes they take your, excuse my language, your under, underwear. And some stuffs. I want to be decorous with my words, so I, I won't say some things. But these are things going on they, in exchange. So you've you, you got to be careful. Amen? The young men, listen to me. God will bless you. Work hard. Whatever field you are in, work hard towards it. God will, know, God will bless you. God knows how to exalt a man. It's not by shortcut. Don't use your mother, your mother's soul in exchange for wealth. I can't think far that you can use your mother in exchange of wealth and you will still enjoy it. You will eat and belt knowing that you use your mother's soul. What kind of evil is that? What can you give in exchange for your soul? Onyeza or Shein Biara. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Amen. The soul is more valuable than anything. It It is valuable to God. If not, Jesus wouldn't have come down to die. To redeem us. From the power of sin and from the presence of sin. It is because the soul is important to God. Because the soul is more valuable to God. That is why he sent Jesus to come and die for us. Whosoever believed on him will not perish but have everlasting life. It caused Jesus' blood. To redeem the corrupt soul.
from the bondage of sin from the power of sin from the grips of sin it costs somebody's blood for us to be saved you need to understand that your soul is more important to god than one boyfriend thing be or, or, or one marriage be that you don't have that your soul is more important to god than the job you are seeking for and you are not getting your soul is more important I wrote also here that the soul is a priceless treasure. Priceless. Priceless. When we say something is priceless, it means that it is without a price. It, it means that no price can, can be mentioned or can be used to quantify. It means you cannot quantify it in monetary terms. It is priceless. Very, very. First Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. First Peter 1, 18 and 19. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, received by tradition from your fathers peter was explaining but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot peter was explaining the value of a soul and he says that we were not redeemed the word redeemed means to be bought back we were not bought back with corruptible things like gold or silver it means that these things are corruptible silver or gold they are corruptible they are perishable but we were bought with a price and that price is the precious blood of jesus it shows how precious how priceless our soul is jesus died for that troubled cousin in your family Jesus died for that your boss who is insensitive. He is insensitive though, but Jesus died for him as well. The soul is priceless. It's a priceless treasure. Now this understanding is to help us number one, for, for, for us to understand the value of our soul so that we'll be careful with our soul number two is for us to also view people other people in the spectacles of God that is why God has mandated us the church to go out there and win souls because the soul of even a sinner is valuable to God. I thought I would hear amen here. I read this last scripture and I will end. Luke 15 verse 10. Luke 15 verse 10. Luke 15 10. So that likewise I say to you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents over one sinner who repents there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents it means that even the soul of the sinner is important to God that is why when one person repents from his sin or her sin and accept the lordship of Jesus Christ there is party in heaven this is what the script, that's what the scripture means there's what? party 
in heaven. Amen. When a Christian is doing good, yeah, heaven is happy. All right. But when a sinner repents from his sins, there is celebration in heaven. There is party in heaven because the soul of that sinner is important to God. The value of the soul. That is why Jesus had to use his unblemished blood his holy blood to redeem human beings so the objective of this message is to understand the value of your own soul and also to view others in the spectacle of eyes understand that God sees every soul as important so this message should spare us on onto evangelism. Some few weeks back, how many weeks back? Two weeks, we went for evangelism. And you'll be amazed in this neighborhood. You'll be amazed that there are people who just want some, somebody to come to them with a gospel. But there's nobody. We are comforted in our churches air-conditioned churches, powerful church buildings. We talk about hey, our pastor, our bishop. Hey. Whereas other souls are perishing. It is our duty to understand the value of the soul and reach out to others. One of the programs of the church that we should get involved is when we are reaching out to others. Whenever there is evangelism, whenever we say we are reaching out to others, I want to see you, I want you to put in your maximum best. People love prophetic, but we don't love evangelism because we have neglected the value of a soul. Every soul is a soul. A soul is a soul. I say a, a soul is a soul. You'll be amazed if we step out right now and you start talking to somebody about God or about Jesus. You'll be amazed how the person would respond. Some people, you see that it's like a relief. Some people, it's like this is what they are yearning for all this while. There's something wrong in their life. A great theologian called Augustine said that man will never have his rest until he finds his rest in Christ. There are souls out there, they, they are restless. It is the gospel that will bring rest in their lives. Church, it's about time we step out there. It's about time we mobilize our forces. Let's move out of our comfort zone and understand that the value of a soul means so much to God that when one sinner repents, there is celebration in heaven. And can you imagine that if you are the one by whom this sinner repents if there is a party in heaven and it is because of you it is because of your effort through your efforts there is there is there is i mean party in heaven because you reach out to a sinner and the sinner has repented and there is party in heaven you think god will forget you if you throw a party for god in heaven he will throw a party for you here on earth. That is the value of the soul. I end here with part one. Next week we'll deal with part two. God bless you. Thank you for listening. You can locate Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry at the Ogwa Teachers Hall, Bakano, Cape Coast. 